It's 10.05, and that ain't no jive. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Pop On to Pop Off. It's a uh, Thursday night, 10.05, if you're watching live, which one person is right now. I already have one like. How do you know you like me? (laughs) I could be terrible, terrible. Suddenly, I'm switching into the uh, Wicked Witch of the East. Margaret Hamilton, who would later go on to play Cora in the Maxwell House coffee commercials in her late years. (laughs) Of course, by then she looked nothing like the Wicked Witch. She looked like your grandmother, you know, your your kind grandmother who just happens to have ex-husbands buried in the basement, that kind of thing. I feel like I'm cutting off the top of my head here. Is that better? Yeah, it's a little better. How are you? Oh, boy. Tried to get in here uh, as fast as I could and then set up the uh, go live program here on YouTube and then realized, of course, that I had not plugged in the camera. So it's back to square one. When you try, especially this happens to me, when you try to do something fast, you end up having to do it all over again. It never works out. And it can be dangerous. It can be dangerous. And look at this uh, fancy writing here. Um, Adelaine. With a lightning bolt, too. Adelaide. Okay. Pam Donnelly. Hi, Jack. Oh, here's uh, M. Silva from the great state of Texas. My husband has the same shirt you're wearing, really. (laughs) I didn't plan to really uh, uh, wear this, but I wore it as my kind of like my undershirt when I was wearing my checkered. red and black uh it's almost like a jacket but it's a shirt kind of thing because it's uh it's still cold here in new york right now about 27 degrees Uh, march came in like a lion after we had some nice spring weather earlier in the month and even a couple of days in february um we had everything yesterday from uh um nice sunny weather to hail And we don't get hail often around here in the Hudson Valley. And then uh, a little snow, enough to cover the grass, but not really stick to the roads. Hi, William Murphy. Hello. Julie, 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 do you love me? Hi. Linda Justice. Hey, Jack. Heather is here. And um, already about uh, 15 watching. Well, I'm glad. I'm only going to be here for a little while because tomorrow is the... Is the Westchester day. Get up at like 10 minutes to 7 in the morning, which to me is ungodly. It's ungodly. The thought of it. The good thing is, and I have to do it alone because I can't. I cannot ask Karen to get up at that hour and be ready to go out the door at 10 minutes to 8. Because even though my appointment is until 10 o'clock, you never know what you could face. Rerouting and what have you, that kind of thing. And you don't want uh, you don't want to uh, get to your appointment late because they'll just cancel it out. You know, I can't show up at ten thirty for a cardiac sonogram that I was supposed to have at ten o'clock, and uh, then I, right after that, I see either the nurse practitioners or doctor, my cardiac uh, specialist, or both, or all three, I should say. I very much enjoy your lives, Jack. Well, that's very nice, Julie. Where are you watching from? Uh, we got um, blue bonnets blooming everywhere here, yeah. But you know your grass, your lawns in Texas, they kind of look like dry hay. <laughs> They're not lush. I mean, even even if you are, you know, watering them, and I don't know how much uh, water restriction there is out there, even though I've been a number of times because my kids live there, um, you know, 
you just don't get those lush East Coast lawns. But uh, and you even get some winter cold weather, like you know, in the forties anyway. If it should uh, snow or ice up, everything closes for a while. But uh, there's a lot about Texas that I enjoy very much. Looking forward to getting there and seeing my kids. Beverly Church, hello from Kentucky. Enjoy your show. Hi, Beverly Church. Are you a first-timer? Because I might remember that name, and I, it's not ringing a bell. So if you're a first-time uh, joining in on the live show, I welcome you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We seem to get a lot of people from Kentucky. Isn't that interesting? I would say more than a dozen sometimes, you know, if you add it all up. And um, I'm... Uh, I'm really happy about that. Um, we get a lot from various states, and then we get, uh, I, I looked at a more detailed analysis of the audience, uh, and um, of course, the United States is number one, the UK is behind that, and uh, then it's Australia, and then it's South Africa. Not too much in South, Af South Africa, but definitely there's more than one person that watches us in South Africa. And I, I hear from them. I hear from them. So that's really cool. And then I didn't get the other breakdown of other places. So it's not like they're watching in Spain. But if you are, well, I've never been to Spain, but I uh, kind of like the Beatles. Let me know where you're watching from, whether it's live or in the replay, because if you are watching replay crowd, uh, as soon as we complete this uh, pop on to pop off to really promo the Saturday night show, um, I, um, um, I interact with the people in the uh, replay stream too, the replay comment section, so to speak. I try to. Sometimes, you know, like uh, there's so many videos now, and if I don't get a special notification that someone commented, I got to go video by video, it seems, to uh, to find out what people said. And sometimes I miss it for a while, and that can be dangerous. Um, but, uh, like, I haven't checked uh, the comment section in my cardio or myopathy or my heart videos uh, recently or my videos that I did in 2016, but nobody's watching them anyway, you know, so... Uh, what do you think, Adelaine? You're not Adelaine Nix, are you? Because I would know you if you were Adelaine Nix. Uh, Amy? <laughs> I don't know. William Brown. Hi, William Brown. Nice to see you here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Jeanette, uh, I want to say Ferrer, like Jose Ferrer. Jose Ferrer. He was a classy dude, wasn't he? I just barely remember him, but I know he used to go on The Tonight Show, I believe. Yeah, just like, um, what's his name there? Uh, Fernando Lamas, father of Lorenzo Lamas. Fernando Lamas, the man just, he just dripped elegance, you know? Uh, in fact, uh, when Billy Crystal did Fernando on Saturday Night Live, when Billy Crystal decided to be a regular for a season, or two, I think it was only one, uh, to help the show because it was struggling. And uh, he did Fernando. Uh, it's not how you feel, it's how you look. Not even a tuck, darling, not even a tuck. Great. And Fernando Lamas thought it was the funniest thing, you know, because <laughs> he would go on Johnny Carson, and, I mean, he was just styling with always that tan, that George Hamilton tan. Did you ever see George Hamilton when he didn't have a tan, you know? Oh. JW61, hello, Jack. You always have a good show from Belton, Texas. How far is that from, like, Austin? Karen Warner, hello, from B Branch, Arkansas. B Branch. Well, that's cool. Welcome, Karen. I think uh, you're a first-timer that I... The, the, the name doesn't sound... Um, like I haven't heard it before, but I've never heard B Branch, so it's probably the first time you said it if you have been here before. I ain't never been to Kansas. <laughs> okay. She's never been to Kansas. Have I been to Kansas? I don't think so. I don't think so. I'd like to go to Kansas uh, City because I hear there's some crazy little women there, and, and I want to get me one. I'm hoping Karen's asleep now. I don't know. Just left her a little while ago. <laughs> she was very nice. 
uh, today. We uh, we went up to the Flaming Grill in the town of Newburgh, New York, for the beautiful buffet. Everything from salmon to the stuff you shouldn't be eating, like the General Chow's or however you say it, sesame chicken and uh, sushi. But I've kind of gone off sushi. I haven't uh, I haven't had my sushi. Um, but um, it was delicious. Had my broccoli and spinach. This creates the illusion that I'm really eating healthy now. And so I can have a little sweet and sour chicken. And, and I even had a slice of the garlic bread. Um, but uh, she bought me a couple of nice things uh, that came from Amazon. Here it is. You've probably heard about it. You heard about it on TV. If you watch TV, there's Lumi for the women. But there's... Mando for the men. Mando. This little tube is like 20 bucks. And um, I better put on my Dollar Tree readers. Did I bring them over here? I really am like Fred Sanford now with a thousand pairs of glasses. Um, I'm not seeing the Dollar Tree readers, but I got I got a pair that uh, should work. Hi, Jennifer. Jennifer. Besler, hello from Medicine Hat, Medicine Hat, Alberta, Canada. Cool. And we got a lot of ca Canadian people, too. You know, I'm surprised that didn't show up in the top four now that I think about it. But I don't think it did. It was, um, it was um, as I say, the U.S., U.K., Australia, and... Um, South Africa, but it would have to be Canada, it would have to be next. It would have to be. Yes. So, Mando Invisible Cream Deodorant. This is bourbon leather. If you'd like your man to smell like a, like grandma's cedar chest, um, everywhere. This is everywhere deodorant, ladies and gentlemen. I wouldn't put it on my arm armpits uh because i i like where is it oh my choice is a liquid gel arid that's what i use um under the arms and i'll especially make sure i put on a, a big dose tomorrow because i'll i'll have my shirt off laying on a table with a pretty woman hanging over me <laughs> for my cardiac sonogram for like 45 minutes giving me commands to breathe in, hold it, hold it. Okay. You can breathe. <laughs> so you want to really have the good stuff. And they put this on the bottom shelf of ShopRite and then they took it off and they just have the solids, but I like the gel ShopRite. So I get it from Amazon now and I probably save money doing it. So this is my uh, choice. And Karen likes this too. She likes this too. Women can use this. The uh, XX Arid Gel. Yes. Right guard, not so good. Hot summer day, it stops working. That's been my experience. But um, Mando <laughs> is for everywhere else. You've seen the commercials. Lumi for the women. Pretty woman who invented this. She's a professional uh, something, nurse or something. Maybe a doctor. I'm not sure. But she invented this, and now she's uh, making millions because people are uh, buying this. And she says, this is for everywhere, pits, feet, um, your private places, including the butt. She says, I will now demonstrate. And then she says, no, I won't. Just kidding. <laughs> but you can put this everywhere and uh, smell like a cedar chest if you're a man. And uh, I don't mind smelling like a cedar chest. I don't want some, you know, flowery uh, rose type thing. Hmm. Yes, it smells like grandma's cedar chest. I'll put some right here. Mm -hmm. So I got that. And I got some um, practical birthday gifts. Um, I got the, um, from Amazon, because they're making their own stuff now, or, you know, putting their name on it, whatever. Hmm. Sorry, Mr. Mike. Um, those uh, beet chews, beet chews, very, very good for you to have your beets. We try to juice from time to time, juice beets with apples and carrots, but um, 
you know, that is a lengthy process, having to cut all that up so the juicer doesn't get used a whole lot. She has the little shake uh, machine for her Suzanne Summers uh, shakes, her gut renewed shakes, and I have some of that from time to time. They're very good. Uh, and um, Suzanne may be gone, but the company lives on, so I'm very happy to have my Mando. <sighs> So let's see what everybody's saying. Um, me and Blue were told never to return to Elvis Hotel in Graceland. Blue pooped everywhere. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, that's the thing about, you know, people bring their dogs on vacation. And um, I'm just not... Uh, I'm just not that kind of dog person. I'm more of a cat person, but I love dogs. I really do. But um, a dog can easily ruin a vacation. I mean, you you say, well, we're going to go to the beach now, and they don't want the dog on the beach, so we're going to leave it in the hotel. You don't, you're not even at the door, and that uh, dog is barking uh, ferociously. Maybe the couple next door wasn't feeling well, and they were going to take a nap. Now what? You know, so um, I... <sighs> I don't believe in taking dogs on vacations and stuff like that on a regular basis. So that'll, that'll turn some people against me, but uh, I don't believe on having a dog on the bed. I'm not even too thrilled about a cat on the bed, to be honest with you. Just not that kind of person. I have a brother in Houston and another brother in League City, Texas, says Julie. Uh, JW... Uh, 61 is 60 miles north of Austin by Fort Hood, by Fort Hood. Yeah. Conway Whitty, Conway Whitty, Arkansas, Adelaide. <laughs> okay. Not Conway Twitty, but Conway Whitty. Conway Twitty's mansion is in Tennessee, where the Trinity Broadcasting Network has their facilities. It's right next door to it, but uh, TBN used to be owned by Paul and Jan Crouch, now by Matt Crouch. Um, um, they bought the Conway Twitty house. So I did see it, but I didn't go inside of it because I did go to uh, the TBN studios in, uh, in Tennessee. I'm trying to think of the name of the, uh, the city in Tennessee, and I can't come up with it off the top of my head. It's been a long time. That goes back to the first marriage. Howdy, Jack. Well, hello, Stephen Spillage. What's going down with you? I agree with you. When I go on holiday, I go with no kids or pets. Take a break from all responsibilities. Yes. Yes. Um, Brentwood. William Brown's in Brentwood, <laughs> California, where OJ lived. <laughs> Reminds me when you say Brentwood, I think that's where it was, right? Where OJ lived and a lot of famous people. It's a suburb of Los Angeles. So welcome, 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 everybody. Uh, this Saturday night, we'll be doing uh, Worldwide Ramblings at uh, 10.30 p.m. East Coast time. And um, we uh, plan to have a good time cover um serious stuff and then just lighthearted fun stuff like we like to do um there's some dissension uh at household of faith or from people who they used to go there we're not going to dwell on that and if the household of uh, faith people are concerned about it no need to be uh because uh i've seen this kind of dissension in just about every church that i went into there is uh there is a certain kind of person and you know, uh, that uh, that is prone to do that. Some of the people that do it have been from one church to another, to another, to another, you know. Um, this goes back to what I've talked about, that a lot of churches become like social clubs, and people want a certain status. They expect a certain status. And if not, they'll become cross with the pastor, and before you know it, um, they're... Um, they're uh, flapping their gums and headed out the door or trying to uh, have the pastor thrown out. That's, a, that's another popular thing. That's why I've known of independent churches. One comes to mind where the, uh, the pastor uh, 
basically owned the church. His family was the board of directors, you know. There were no elders that were going to fire him. He was he was the man, and uh, if you wanted a position in his church, you had to uh, tithe. See, everything you gave uh, was put on record, was put on record. I guess you could throw cash in there if you wanted to. I don't think he'd turn it down. But if you were looking for a church uh, title, if you were looking to have a ministry in the church, you had to write checks and, and, and they would keep a record. And if you were not giving a tenth of your income, you would never advance in that church. You would never get a position in that church. They wouldn't throw you out because, you know, if you're giving a uh, $15 a week, that's better than nothing, or 10 bucks a week, but you'd never get a, you never teach a Sunday school or anything else like that. Isn't that interesting? So I've seen all this kind of stuff. Um, hello, Hearts Wild. Hello, Hearts Wild. How are you? Glad you made it in here. We're a little earlier than you, you would usually come on, and we're not going to be on too long because I do have to get up at about 10 minutes to uh, seven in the morning for that drive to Westchester. But usually, uh, by the time I get down to uh, the Mario Cuomo Bridge, the Mario Cuomo Bridge around the uh, Tarrytown area, um, the people that were going to New York City are already in it. So I'm just dealing with the people who work in Westchester area that are going to work, you know. And then if I get out of there before noon, I will beat all the... Uh, exodus out of new york city even on a friday i will beat it and i will get back up to the hudson valley within like an hour or less so i like that part so i usually arrive at this hospital even whether it's a morning appointment or an afternoon appointment i'm usually there like an hour before my appointment because you just never know what you're going to run into you know bad accident or something like that and it can it can mess up everything it can mess up everything. Hi, Joseph uh, uh, Kelly. Yes, we haven't seen you for a while. Sorry I haven't been around as of late. Please pray for my family, especially my dad. He's not good because uh, we lost Mama to cancer on February 19th. Sorry to hear that. 2024 and only 61 years old. No, that's that's terrible. Yeah, that's, that's too young. I mean, maybe when I was a little kid, I thought 61 was old, but uh, now it's 68 years old. <laughs> I don't think that. I don't think that anymore. But I did. I did beat my dad, who died at 67. Um, he only had a few weeks left to. He turned 68. But I did beat my dad, who died of um, probably cardiomyopathy. They didn't even know what that was then in 67. There were no MRIs. So were, I don't know if there were there were cardiac sonograms, and there certainly wasn't Mavicantin, which I'm on, you know, so I have advantages he didn't have. Uh, hi, one hip chick. Hello, Jack, and good evening. Um, and uh, my dad had a uh, MRI Monday to see if his if he has a tumor that's causing his uh, hearing loss. So please, please pray. Amen. Uh, we'll make note of that, and uh, I will pray in my evening prayers as well tonight as I get ready to uh, try to get to sleep. It's never easy when you try to uh, when you try to um, change up your schedule. You know. Um, one way to do it is, is be dirt tired all day. Um, but, um, that makes a very unproductive day and it's not, uh, it's not good. It's not good to be, uh, dead tired like that. I usually end up falling asleep in my recliner and now I'm refreshed and now how am I going to get to sleep? But I didn't take a nap this evening. Um, I didn't. Well, Richard Lyon, I feel like I just talked to you. What's up, Jack? What's up? Nice to see you here, Richard. Um, I was just getting ready to scurry upstairs when I heard from Richard. He's a Queens boy, and I'm a Bronx boy, sort of, but I don't feel like it because we left when I was three. What do I remember? Zero. I lived on Fox Street in the Bronx. I was born at uh, what is now Columbia Presbyterian Medical Center. 
Then they called it Sloan Hospital. And then Sloan got together with Kettering and started the cancer hospital downtown, right? I think I got that right. Um, hello, Brenda. How is Karen doing? Says Hearts Wild. She's doing good. We, uh, you know, had a busy week, including uh, today she tried to get her Botox injections, but she's got uh, the Atna Medicaid Advantage uh, uh, plan now. She had to switch to that because the other uh, Medicare, I always want to say Medicaid, Medicare Advantage plan that she had, uh, the, the major the major uh, health care provider in Orange County is Crystal Run Healthcare. Um I go more to uh, Middletown Medical, but um, long story short that the Botox has not been authorized yet. It hasn't been approved yet, so they said they'll squeeze her in when uh, when they get approval. So we went there for nothing, and then I said, well, let's go to Flaming Grill, which we did. And um, earlier this week, it was going to see a uh, new neurologist who... Uh, wants her to have an MRI and that'll be some out of pocket expense because that's how it is, you know, um, you know, anywhere between two and $400. And, and how do they expect, uh, seniors that, um, you know, have a fixed income and they're trying to live just on social security. That'll never happen. Even if you have subsidized housing, right? So they end up not getting the MRI. I think a lot of the times. So, um, I don't know. What can I tell you? The city of New York, Mayor Adams, tried to get us on the Atna, the retirees, New York City retirees, because that's where I get my health insurance from, my, you know, my secondary and um, my hospital and what have you. Um, he tried to make that happen, and uh, they filed a lawsuit, and uh, we we didn't get stuck with that because it would have been a lot more out-of-pocket expenses, even though we would have, have had one of the better Atna Medicare plans. Ken Larkin is here. Good evening, Jack and friends. Hi, hi, hi. Jennifer says, who wants some snow? We are under a snowstorm here in uh, southern Alberta. And sorry, I know this was random. <laughs> Um, is that you saying bye for tonight or is that LOL? Yes. I don't have my, my best glasses. Well, yeah. LOL. Yeah. I don't think we're getting any snow here, but it is really a drag when, you know, you're so ready for spring and things are starting to sprout. And then all of a sudden it's back in the twenties at night and there's a little bit of snow on the ground and, uh, um, it, it messes with your mind. Don't you think, uh, Donna Manning, hello from Florida. Well, you don't have to worry about that, do you? You're like my buddy Richard Lyon there, sitting there with a glass of, uh, well, a 1927 Bordeaux, I believe, tonight, if I remember. A 1927 Bordeaux. But as uh, Steve uh, Martin told the waiter in the movie The Jerk, uh, yes, we'll have some wine, please. And look. Don't give us some of that old stuff. We want fresh wine. We want fresh wine. <laughs> Funny movie. Anybody remember what uh, Steve Martin's dog, what his name was in the movie, The Jerk? Let's see. <laughs> uh, yeah. So right now, 80 and beautiful here, Jack. Yes, I bet it is. You're having a summer breeze by seals and crops most of the year, right? And sometimes you're having a weather that's hotter than Hades. Hotter than Hades. Um, 55 people watching. Well, very good. 15 likes. Yes, please hit the like button if you like. I mean, we're just doing really an intro here. So the people that come on and say, oh, well, you, you took your 40 minutes to get to the... Uh, to the topic. I don't really have a topic tonight. I'm telling you, though, on Saturday night, we will, and I'll get to it faster. Get to the main topic faster, much faster, and then those people can go away, you know, because there's the three-minute uh, attention span crowd. That's all they have. YouTube is like two, three minutes or less. So a lot of the creators are stuck having to come up with these uh, great titles and, and even do stuff they don't even believe in. 
even do stuff they don't even believe in because uh, they can't just do what they want to do because it, it, you know, they've got to be successful. They've got to pay the bills. If you're Candace Owens or any number of other people, you have to keep the views up. You have to keep the views up They're They're paying a staff and what have you, you know, it's big time. Um, but, um, as, um, Harvey, um, Levin said, when we go to the laundry on Wednesday afternoon, Mr. Washy Washy, <laughs> Mr. Washy Washy laundry, um, he usually has a uh, TMZ on, you know, on, they play it in the afternoon. I might be the replay from the day before, but he was talking about, uh, I think he was talking about Travis Kelsey who's got some kind of broadcast now that's uh that's taylor swift's um boyfriend look out for him i have a video on him he can be a hothead um but um he was saying it was working because they know the number one rule in uh broadcasting and programming and that's know your audience that's the number one thing you, uh, you may be known for uh, talking about skateboarding and you want to come on and talk about the situation in, uh, in Israel and um, um, Gaza, but that's not your audience. That's not your audience. So I get to do a little of that because there's such important stuff. How can you not comment on it? And there's a spiritual aspect to it. Um. But, um, you know, I, I have to accept what my lane is. <laughs> I have to accept what my lane is. Hello, Sue Fenner. We know what my lane is. We know what, what's number one with a bullet. If you've been here any uh, amount of time, the whole reason we are about to hit 7,000 subscribers, if we haven't already, I didn't check. Because I was in a rush, 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 you know, and when I'm in a rush, 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 I make mistakes, mistakes, mistakes. Uh, we're about to hit 7,000 uh, subscribers, and I thank you very much for that. And now, of course, I'm, I'm thinking the Big Ten, the Big Ten. Can we hit the Big Ten? So please subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the like button and the notification bell. I bet you most of the people here, not all of them, uh, have the notification bell on. So when we pop on to pop off. Um, you know about it and, uh, others just happen to see this, some guy named Jack Willard live. Well, I'll see what he's doing there. And, uh, some will like, and some will not, <laughs> some will definitely not. Wouldn't you say that's right? Uh, Martin, howdy. Hello, Martin Gondellis. How you doing, Jack? Well, I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good here. Uh, in the uh, late evening of March the 21st, 2024. Um, and um, Marcy, hi, Marcy. Hello, Jack. How have you been? I've been pretty good. You know, as I say, you, you, I don't know if, if you guys experience this, but the amount of chores between what Karen needs to do, I mean, it seems like in the course of a month, we have to go to CVS seven, eight times minimum. We both have these boxes of pills, you know, um, mine is under the table by my recliner and right across Karen has her big box of pills. What if we just stop taking everything? <laughs> the guy next door who's got all kinds of health issues said that. What if you just stop taking everything? Because when we were young and we were together in 1964, 65, 67, 66, 67, 68 at St. Joseph's Catholic School on Cottage Street. We didn't have boxes of pills then. We had plaid. I had a plaid tie, white shirt, green blazer, brown pants, brown shoes. She had on that, uh, that, uh, that plaid uh, dress and a blouse, that, that plaid dress that has become a fantasy of men in later years. <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, we didn't have boxes of pills then. And I would, uh, I remember playing in the recess time, you know, out there with the boys, Charlie and, and Keith and Michael, Michael's down in Port, uh, Orange, Florida now where they have a Culver's. I wish I was there, Mike, uh, Culver's, uh, 
with the best fish sandwiches. Anyway, um, I would say, uh, let me see now. This is 1966. How old would I be in the year 2000? And I came up with uh, 46 years old. And I thought, well, 46, that's not too old. And 2000 is so far off. It's so far off. So I thought, okay, maybe uh, maybe I'll live well past 2000. Adeline is talking eggs and cheeseburgers. <laughs> you cheeseburgers. <laughs> you people do put eggs on their cheeseburgers sometimes, don't they? Uh, yeah, it's not for me. Um, and I don't put ketchup on my eggs. I'm not that. Um, God, the Son, Jesus Christ saves. Amen, amen, amen. Hi, how you doing? A lot of our people here uh, from the uh, Saturday Night Worldwide Ramblings. At 1030 this Saturday night, the uh, 23rd of March, the 23rd of March, and 1030 to, well, you know, to we're done. And um, we'll be talking about uh, some uh, issues at uh, Pastor Bob Joyce's church. If you're going to have people, you're going to have issues. So um, I'll give you my impression on that and someone else's impression. Um, and um, what else? So we're going to talk about the fear of death a little bit. And then we're going to get lighthearted and have some fun, you know. But uh, I remember Michael Savage, anybody watch Michael Savage? At least several of you here have, um, have told me that you started watching Michael Savage right here on YouTube. He's the inspiration for Jack Savage. There's a couple of Jack Savage videos up here at this channel, The Virtual Church of the Disillusion. Please watch them. Please uh, indicate that you did. If you like it, hit the like button. And... Um, uh, Michael just hit 50,000 subscribers, 50,000. So congratulations, Michael Savage, on 50,000 subscribers. But as he's finding out, it doesn't really matter so much in terms of uh, how successful your video is going to be, whether you have 50,000, 7,000 or less. It, it, it's, it's all in the content, and the title is extremely important. It's extremely important. I just thought of some funny things like if I put up a title, Stormy Daniels Exposed, I'd probably get a lot of hits. Put a picture of her up there, clothed, of course. Um, yeah, it's all in the title. But if you're going to have a, 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 a edgy title, you've got to deliver in the title. You've got to deliver. There are people that put up bogus stuff here. So even saying someone passed away or making you think someone passed away and it turns out their grandmother died. You know, some big celebrity's grandmother died. But they're trying to make it sound in the title like it was the celebrity themselves that died. All kinds of tricks. And I don't know what YouTube does about that, but that's uh, not my not my area. Not my area. Did you see there was no service at Pastor Bob's church this past Sunday? Is that true? I'm still trying to get to the sermon from before that. Someone did tell me that someone named Randy is responsible for putting up the praise and worship services. And he, uh, um, they use the term out of pocket. And I don't know what that means. That's, is that like under the weather? <laughs> out of pocket. That must be an Arkansas term or something because we don't use it here in New York. Uh, if I talk about me pocket, I put something in me pocket, you know. Or I'm playing, um, I'm playing pool, and I got to get uh, the seven ball in in the left pocket. <laughs> Whatever, Judy Wright. Are you the one that was watching Dark Shadows, or is that somebody else? I forget, Judy Wright. Um, I think it was you, but I'm not really sure. Uh, technical difficulties with his channel. Um. Usually the technical difficulties would be in the equipment, in the equipment. Um, so I don't know. Melissa VD, hi. The sermon was posted by his son, Matt Joyce. Okay. Well, I'm sure Matt is very capable. He's a great Elvis impersonator. And um, um, yeah, 
and I'm not going to question any of the uh, sentence there. I'm going to stay away from that. My meatloaf came out good, though. <laughs> well, Sue, meatloaf, a good meatloaf with gravy or even ketchup sometimes, but that's not, that's usually if it's cold. If you're going to have a cold meatloaf sandwich, put a little ketchup on. Oh, but a meatloaf sandwich. Now, let me, don't hear, let me hear, Sue, that you served a good meatloaf and served it with white rice, all right? Because that should be a felony, in my in my humble opinion. You got to have your mashed taters, and not out of a not out of simply potatoes or a Bob Evans uh, uh, container. No, you got to have some nice homemade mashed potatoes. You got to got to take out your blender and whip them up good. Yeah, put a little milk and butter in there. And then I got to put more butter on my potatoes. My mother told me all my life, you don't need to put butter on the potatoes. I put butter in it. I never understood that. <laughs> it's like that old commercial. Do you want stuffing or potatoes for dinner? Would they say that on Thanksgiving? Are we going to have mashed potatoes or stuffing? Which do you want? This is beyond my comprehension. Beyond my comprehension. Don't you think so, Frank Chandler? Don't you want both stuffing and potatoes? He went on Sun Tom's channel. Huh. Okay. That's interesting. Jack, I cook great meatloaf and mashed taters. Yeah, you got to have your taters like those taters. Don't give me the French fries either now. No, no, no. Green beans. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Corn salad rolls. Well, that sounds interesting. Gravy from the meatloaf. Uh, potatoes and iced tea. Yes. Iced tea. I remember iced tea from Law and Order, right? And, of course, a rap star. And he does those... Um, <laughs> He does those car warranty commercials, you know. He's standing in front of his fleet of expensive vehicles, and he's telling you, he's looking in the camera, and he's telling you how happy he is that he has car shield to protect his babies. <laughs> That's funny right there. That's funny right there. So, you know, a number of years ago, I... um you know, long after he had he had uh, left the the rap scene to the extent where that was his main thing, and he's been doing Law and Order for years, and uh, he had this reality show, Ice Loves Coco, which I used to watch from time to time. It was somewhat entertaining, not as good as Gene Simmons' Family Jewels. I love that show, Gene Simmons' Family Jewels, and the Osbournes, the first one there that they did. I love that show too. But uh, so I knew that he loved his wife, Coco. And here's a song called uh, Ice Loves Coco. And I, uh, I, I gave that a spin and I could not believe what I was hearing, what he was calling his wife in the song, what he was saying in general in the song. What the heck? What the heck? I don't get that. I don't get rap. I mean, if you're saying something positive in your rap lyrics, I'm fine with that. Ah, heart's wild. You're just joining. Well, then you have to be sworn in and you have to take a blood oath, heart's wild. You must take a blood oath. Everybody else here has. Hello, Julie Backus. Hey, Brenda. <laughs> they love Brenda. Uh, next year, I am coming to your house. See how popular you are, Brenda. Now, I think you should charge a small fee for uh, overnight rental. You'll be like an Airbnb there, Brenda, like an Airbnb. <laughs> uh, Karen Harry is here. God bless everyone. God bless you, Karen Harry. Do you get tired like my Karen does of uh, the name Karen now standing for a woman that's obnoxious and uh, then the sh that, that, that shrieks or something like that? How did they pick Karen for that? It's not fair. Pick Megan. That would have been better. Do we have any Megans here? <laughs> Shell is here. Shell says, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jack. Happy, I thought you said 88th. Happy 68th birthday to you. Well, thank you very much, Shelly from Canada. I appreciate that. I really, really do. Um, I'm glad I made it to this uh, number. 
I really am. So thank you. I watch both shows. Jack, wasn't that Family Jewels wonderful? Really was. Um, I find uh, Gene Simmons to be a fascinating figure, and I find the rest of his family to be as well. Um, what was the biggest shock to you on Family Jewels, Hearts Wild? What was the biggest shock to you? It should be an obvious one because I was I couldn't believe it. I started to like Kiss. I've seen he is not so bad. People thought the same thing of Ozzy Osbourne, like Rosie O'Donnell thought Ozzy Osbourne was a freak. She started watching the Osbournes and fell in love with Ozzy, and the, the, the whole family had a whole different view based on that reality show. Uh, if you're talking about our topic Saturday night, we're not going to dwell on that, but we will talk about that. Oh, yeah, that's what I was talking about, Michael Savage. Uh, no, it was bigger than that, Hearts Wild, how normal Gene was. But that that's a that that would be in the top three, I would say. Yeah, that he was, you know, just a normal kind of guy in a sense, a very shrewd businessman. Um now I forgot what I was just gonna say. Uh to me, in terms of uh, family jewels, so they had an episode where uh Gene took a lie detector test. He said that since he met his wife, what the heck is her name? I'm trying to grab it out of my head, and it's it's in a compartment that I requires a passcode, and I'm never good at keeping passcodes, passwords, whatever. <laughs> um, he said that since he had met his wife, or at least since they had gotten married, he had never cheated on her, not once. And I thought, there's no way. This guy has bragged about how many women he's had. I think he said something like 6,000. So I thought, there's no way he's going to be able to tell me out on tour and what have you, because she wasn't always with him, uh, that he has never cheated on her since they were married. And he passed that lie detector test. That's all I know. He passed. And that was the most surprising moment on Family Jewels for me. Wouldn't you agree, Jennifer? <laughs> Uh-oh, Jack is froze. I hope that's your local cable company and not, not mine. Yum, Brenda. Jack, his wife uh, is Shannon. Yeah, yeah, Shannon. I love that name. Henry Gross. That was Henry Gross's only record. I'm not frozen everywhere, am I? Um, just... Um, I'm just Mr. Freeze to, uh, was that Sue that said that? Sue, you are having issues. But um, Sharon was um, Ozzy's wife and still is. Still is. Ozzy's got Parkinson's, but he's got the kind of Parkinson's that's not so bad. Uh, there's different kinds of Parkinson's. You don't want the kind Michael J. Fox has. But yet. I mean, it was way back when they were doing Doc Hollywood when he found out that he had Parkinson's. And they said, oh, you got about 10 years left, though. You got about 10 years left to work, to be a working actor. And uh, he worked way past that, although eventually his roles required him to play someone who had Parkinson's. So it looks like that freezing problem is uh, all yours. All good, Richard Lyons says in Palm Springs. You haven't moved into your new condo yet, have you, Richard? Richard is uh, getting a new uh, um, condo and is yet to find out that his next-door neighbor just loves the M&M. Not M&Ms, but M&M. &M. <laughs> I just love to hear a guy who's filthy rich rapping about how bad life has been for him, you know? Yes, I got a scratch in my Bentley. I have to snack a little during the show here. I, I stole Karen's nuts. She doesn't know it yet. I'll put them back on the kitchen table tomorrow morning before I take my drive down to Westchester. But I have to, I have to, I'm, I, I need my late night snack. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> um, Who thinks he did drugs? Are we talking Gene or Ozzy? I 
I am hit and miss here. Does that mean you're freezing sometimes, Pam Donnelly? Most people say it's good. Hello, Mary. How are you? You're good. You're good over there, wherever you are, uh, Mary. I forget, you know. At this age, I barely know where the door is. <laughs> um, what's your favorite breakfast of all time, Julie, Julie, Julie? My favorite breakfast of all times comes from Perkins Pancake House. It is a ham and cheddar cheese omelet with three pancakes which I put the twin berry on, but they seem to have taken the twin berry away, and now it's regular blueberry. And the breakfast um, home fries, not the potatoes, the home fries, you know, the, the the stringy stuff. That's my favorite breakfast. Yeah. Not that I don't love my French toast and stuff like that. Ken Larkin says, I think um, Bob Joyce is a great pastor. I certainly agree with that. And um, any pastor is going to have to deal with personalities in their congregation. So we'll be talking a little bit about that Saturday night, but we won't be putting anybody down. I mean, if their own words put them down, well, that's up to them. You know, they said I'm not me, but um, we're not out to, to say anything bad about anybody. Katina Swatworth, happy birthday. Well, thank you, Katina and the Waves. Do the Waves wish me happy birthday, too? I hope so. Thank you very much. Everybody say the first thing that comes to mind and go, Adeline. Hmm. Cashews. Mighty tasty with the dill. Little dill on the um, cashews. Very good. Nuts. That describes me. <laughs> I miss John Cook, says Pam Donnelly. He was there for quite a while, though, you know, many, many years. I heard, I hear that he moved to uh, Little Rock. But um, he was the man that made it all happen for Pastor Bob Joyce and um, uh, his, um, laid the foundation before Stacy came along and, and what have you. They're all working hard over there. So I don't have anything bad to say about him. Well, thank you for stopping, um, Karen Harry. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you'll join us for Worldwide Ramblings this Saturday night at uh, 1030. Uh, 1030. Ella W., Pastor Bob Joyce. I think you're trying to say took his video down last uh, Sunday at 2 a.m. At 2 a.m. It wouldn't have been up. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder why he's uh, taking his videos down. This could be some kind of a technical problem or have you people were talking about. I have no idea. I have no idea. Um, sometimes you start to think, you know, I mean, how long is Pastor Bob going to do this and what have you? He's definitely going to do it to at least into August when they have the big, uh, service at the um, Hot Springs Convention Center on August 11th, followed by baptism. Um, sometimes I get these stirrings that, you know, things could change by the fall, but that may just be, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a psychic. I'm not uh, saying it's a word of knowledge, which is the kind of the Christian version in the Pentecostal church. Uh, so I'm just saying, I don't know. I don't know. I do have those stirrings, though. I do have those uh, stirrings, you know. Nothing lasts forever except the love of God, the love of God. Um, even death and taxes will go eventually, if you can believe that. If you can believe that. Richard and I were talking a little bit earlier about, um, just very briefly, about uh, the persecuting of uh, Donald Trump. 
I just can't believe. I mean, even 20 years ago, this uh, stuff couldn't be going on. Could you imagine before you even got into office as the AG, you're making it publicly known with a smile on your face as you chat with your friends that you're going to go after Trump. He's going to know my name and what have you. That would disqualify you, but it won't disqualify you if the people that should be stepping in and say, whoa, 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 you said that you're out. You know, you can't you can't have anything to do with this case if the people that are surrounding you are of the same mindset. Um, this is how the country goes down to the point where we'll just lose it. We'll lose the country, you know. Um, you know, here was a what seemed to be a very nice judge from um, Atlanta had a chance to uh, make a positive move for the country. Uh, he had enough evidence that there had been a lot of shenanigans and some improper behavior and then left the DAN but noted the behavior. Makes no sense. It's terrible. It's, 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 uh, it's heartbreaking. So pray for President Trump and pray for Joseph uh, Kelly's dad. I'll keep them in your prayers tonight if you be so inclined. Um. Yeah, it, it, it makes me nauseous to, to see what's going on, you know, and we hope that um, things will work out, uh, that they won't be able to on Monday uh, seize President Trump's assets. We hope there'll be a victory that'll come out of left field. I guess it can't get to the Supreme Court until it goes through the, the smaller courts, but it's uh, Peter Navarro, who worked for President Trump, is doing a four-month uh, prison sentence now because he didn't uh, show up before, I guess, Congress, was it? Um, was it Congress or was it the Senate or whatever it was? Um, he didn't show up. I would have shown up. I have to say that I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't shake my fist. I would show up. And you can take the Fifth Amendment if you want to once you show up. So I don't think Peter uh, Navarro, who you see on Newsmax a lot, not so much on Fox, um, not on Fox usually. He was this week because he was standing there. He gave a little press conference before he entered uh, the uh, jail to be in there four months. He'll be out in August. He'll be out in August. He seems like a very interesting man. And, um, you know, I, he said some good things. Oh, Sam Sammy's here. Yes, Sam Sammy is here. And Teresa Townley, pray for Joe Biden. Um, well, we are commanded in the Bible to pray for our leaders, but uh, I, uh, I believe that uh, Joe Biden is, um, is uh, the worst president, certainly, that we've ever had in my lifetime, and that he has done one evil, bad thing after another. I think that he uh, is the brand in the uh, Biden uh, family, and uh, that's uh, influence peddling, and that's that's a felony, and that is uh, the whole thing. It, so many things from what he did in Afghanistan with the troops, the way he would draw the, the civilians in Afghanistan, to what he's done to the stock market. It's finally starting to rebound, no thanks to him. And to what he's done uh, to uh, the budget. And then how about 9 million people just coming in? Um, I'm for legal immigration, but you can't have people from every country um, filing into uh, our uh, cities and what have you, causing pandemonium and crime. So I have nothing good to say about uh, President Biden. But uh, it is true that the Bible says pray for him. So I will remember to do that tonight. Um, Doris Sutton Schroeder. Yeah, you are with us Saturday night. Hi, Jack and everyone. Sorry I'm late. Doris from Benton, Kentucky. Speaking about, you know, the effects of the Biden presidency. Um, many of the um, criminals that are uh, committing crimes in the major cities are... Uh, illegal immigrants. Um, and uh, this is the post, I guess, today, Looters Incorporated, how organized shoplifting rings 
are costing New Yorkers $4.4 billion a year. This is going to be the death of New York under Kathy Hochul because she's spending money every week. She's got another X amount of millions or whatever for, for, for this group or that group. Every week she's banning this and banning that. I just, you know, I just want to live in Florida at this point. Uh, I'll get out of there during hurricane season, maybe in the, you know, in the summer for a while, go up to Maine, take 95, right, Richard, straight up to Maine. Um, but, um, you know, DAs that don't prosecute crimes. By the way, people say, how is the New York Post so successful? How is so, uh, I was speaking about the name Megan er earlier. <laughs> how is the New York Post sell so many uh, copies when, uh, you know, print newspapers is, is on the way out? They have little tricks that they use. This is page three. This is page three, Megan Fox there, you see. It's little tricks like that that seem for some reason make people want to buy this paper. They want to scoff it right up and take it home. Sorry. If I offended somebody, I, I could guess who that might be, too. Um, but that's um, that helps them sell copies and keeps the uh, conservative newspaper vibrant. Um, yeah, $4 billion a year. I mean, you know, I have a New York City pension on the line here. As small as it is, I don't want to lose it. And I have to wonder if it's in, if it's in dire straits right now. Uh, Michael Kaplan says a shoplifting epidemic costing retailers in New York state 4.4 billion a year in creating a shallow resale economy, which ranges from eBay to bodegas. The post has learned shoplifting in New York city alone rose 64%. Thank you. DA Bragg. Thank you. Kathy Hochul from June, 2019 to June, 2023, according to the Council of Criminal uh, Justice. It's just mayhem. It's just mayhem. When they know they're going to be immediately released, if they should be arrested, um, catch and release, um, you know, they feel emboldened. They feel emboldened. Hi, Lori Wiggins. You are new, right? I don't remember the name Lori Wiggins. Hi. Hi, how are you? Where are you watching us from? Hearts Wild says, wowie for Megan Fox. I don't really know who she is, to be honest with you. I mean, I've heard the name many times. I don't think I've ever seen anything she's done. What's she done? I don't know. Some kind of movie I wouldn't be interested in. Well, maybe I would be. <laughs> the flesh, the flesh would like it. The spirit would not. The spirit would not. Um, Kansas City. So are there some crazy little women there? Are there crazy little women in uh uh, that's really not uh, that's not politically correct though to say that anymore. So Wilbur Harris, Harrison, Wilbur Harris, Wilbur Harris. If he were alive today, I'm not sure he's dead. <laughs> uh, he couldn't sing that lyric. There's a lot of lyrics that we couldn't sing. I mean, can you imagine "Treat Her Like a Lady" by the Cornelius Brothers and Sister Rose being released in 2024? A woman is sentimental and so easy to offend but if you i can't remember the next next line but uh, you know if you play your cards right buddy she'll give in to you she'll give in to you <laughs> could you imagine releasing that song in 2024 <laughs> what do you think Lori? <laughs> she's too delicate She's too delicate. I don't. I don't think Rachel Maddow would would like that song. But then again, who likes Rachel Maddow? She was the thin, very beautiful woman that he was Gaga over. Who uh, who uh, was Gaga over? What do you think of Taylor Swift? I respect her, her drive, her stage performance. Her ability to uh, not only uh, be relevant, become, but to become the number one entertainer in the world right now. The number one entertainer in the world. I can't even tell you one of her songs off the top of my head. I know I listened to a bunch and kind of wanted to not like them, but I thought, you know, these aren't bad. They're pretty good. They're not, I wouldn't say she is, you know, uh, Carly Simon or Carol King from my generation, 
the songs didn't move me, but um, I kind of tapped my foot a little, so I have nothing bad to say about Taylor Swift at all. Nothing bad. Um, you know, when you go to Cardi B and stuff like that, I think, uh, forget about it. Forget about it. Jody is here. Do we have a Jody? Jody can be a boy and it can be a girl <laughs> or both. I'm not sure. Uh, in this modern time, Jody Smith, what do you make of the album Spelling on the Stone that came out in 1989? Do you think it's legit or a hoax? That'll be for somebody else because I have no clue. <laughs> I know nothing about that. I do know that Richard Lyon has said something. I am still surprised they do um, repeats of All in the Family. Yeah, right. You know, uh, we used to be able to laugh at ourselves and we used to be able to know um, shortcomings um, and, and prejudice and prejudice. Uh, Carol O'Connor loved playing Archie um, because he thought that it exposed, um, you know, how juvenile prejudice could be. Uh, Carol O'Connor, of course, was a liberal Democrat, but back in his day, it was like George McGovern. I love George McGovern, but we don't have George McGovern's and Ted Kennedy's anymore. We have we have woke, progressive, soulless nincompoops, nincompoops. Well, you know, as we die off, Richard, <laughs> of course, you'll live a lot longer than me. I realize that, Richard. Um, they will. They will take it off the air. What do you make of that album? Oh, yeah, I already did that. <laughs> um, Heather, Jody, I listened to it today. It was good. You listened to it today. What are the odds of that? There's zero to one. I don't know. Zero to 1,000, uh, something like that. So, yeah, we've got um, 64 watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and like um always want to uh to get your uh input and uh if you're watching in the replay hello to you you are welcome to comment i'll try to interact with you and uh, other people here perhaps as well um i loved all in the family though i really did um so many classic episodes so many classic uh, episodes. When you have an incredible cast of people, that certainly helps. I'm freezing, by the way, because I cover up the vent so the guy downstairs doesn't hear me as much as he's trying to get some shut eye. He was busy all day today. And um, we have that gravity heat. I don't have my space heater on, so I'm freezing at this point. <laughs> Brenda listens to Eminem. Well, you're, you're younger than I am. Um, uh, Brenda, but you still watch All in the Family. Yeah, it's on. It's on. It's on all over the place. This is a funny, talking about the New York Post, I like this about um, John Kerry, our climate czar. I guess he's retiring from that as he, he him and his carbon implant jets all over the world. Um, I like this. Fossil fool. Fossil fool, New York Post. You're putting this on. Carrie says world would be feel better about Russia if it cut emissions. That, that makes him um, dog crap stupid, you know, dog crap stupid. Um, and why he missed his opportunity to play Lurch in the Adams family, I do not know. He probably would have been pretty good. Do I have an amen on that? <laughs> <laughs> Doris says fossil fool. Yeah. So they come up with some great headlines. The New York post, they really do. I guess it's still in the Murdoch family, but we have to worry about them too, because they own Fox. Um, and, um, the kids are, are, um, not anywhere near as conservative as daddy. So we'll see what happens to Fox down the road. It's all going to change. If Donald Trump should be elected, and I'm praying that he does in November, it'll just slow the bleeding for a while. They're gonna win, guys, because we're gonna pass on, and they're gonna they're gonna 
They're going to take this country right into the toilet. Only God can stop them. Only God can stop them. Some things I can't react to in real time because it's it's complicated, you know. It's complicated. Um, so, yeah. I don't think I missed any people. Welcome, Jody Smith. I, uh, they are also still airing the show Archie Bunker's Place. That's right. They are. Uh, he really wanted to continue to call all in the family after the death of Edith, but they didn't want that. Uh, they didn't want that. Uh, so... He had to go with Archie Bunker's uh, place. He had to fight for some things, and he didn't always win, Carol O'Connor, but he often did. But Norman uh, Lear, who's still with us, what is he, 101? Um, he uh, he was a force. <laughs> he was a force. Sue says, Gee, Ho is great. He is uh, putting on, uh, he and his magazine, George Magazine, are putting on the big uh, uh, event the 10th and 11th of August in Hot Springs, Arkansas. And um, uh, Pastor Bob Joyce will uh, bring his congregation to uh, the convention center in Hot Springs Sunday the 11th, and doors open at 9 a.m., and there'll be a baptismal uh, service afterwards, afterwards, okay? You have to let them know in advance about that. Um, Don't come for Elvis, come for... Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, he will take a back seat to nobody and it, it'll be bad for you if, um, you know, if you're not there to praise the Lord, that would be my advice. Um, Sue loves his hints. He just can't help it. He can't help himself. So, um, yeah, coming up on what, an hour and 15 minutes. I've got to straighten up my uh, studio here, which is slash room. Um, and then I got to think about hitting the hay. Uh, Lisa Renee. I used to work with Lisa Renee. It was a fake radio name. It wasn't her real last name. Um, I think I already made mention of my former radio colleague, um, Mark West who passed away a few weeks ago. I went to the hospital and to the ICU unit. And, um, and, uh, he really, he tried to talk a little bit, but he had that mask on, you know, and, uh, I couldn't make out what he was saying. I work for Mark right here down the road when he did a reboot of WHN radio on the internet, he was the morning man. And I was the noon to three man worked for him for about six months. It was a freebie, but I was willing to do it because I believed in what Mark was trying to do. But uh, I always told him, Mark, stop smoking those Chesterfield cigarettes. I could never get him to do it. Anyway, he passed away at uh, 64 years old right here in this city. And um, there's not a person in this town that say over 50 that if you said, do you remember Mark West? Everybody would say yes. Everybody listened to Mark West. And he was on in Pennsylvania. And of course, when the Internet came along, he was heard all over the world. So there you go. So um, we'll do Worldwide Rambling Saturday night. We will. Starting at 1030 East Coast time. By then we should be over 7,000 subscribers. Headed towards hopefully 10,000. That would be cool. That would be cool. People always ask me that. Like friends, you know, they say, I talk about the YouTube channel. And they say, first thing they say is, how many subscribers do you have? <laughs> Well, I'm not Bobby Arnoff. I don't have like a million. You know, I'm not um, I'm not um, Megan Kelly. But, you know, we have our lane. We have our audience. And um, I've come to accept that, you know, and be very grateful for it. Because um, um, the first six years I was had a YouTube channel, I didn't go live at all. I didn't even have a thousand subscribers, you know. So...
Well, I'm glad you enjoy the show, Hearts Wild. Happy birthday, Jack, says Melissa VD. Thank you very much. The best present I could have was, well, Karen. Well, second, the first, uh, the best present I could have would be eternal life with the Lord Jesus Christ, that he would say, come on in, come on in. That's what I want to hear. So um, thank you all for that. I appreciate it very much. Thank you all for stopping on this um, Thursday night. So tomorrow I will go down to Westchester and uh, probably stop over at the diner after that and see my buddy uh, Leon. He, he's a he's a he's a Biden guy, an 81 year old Biden guy, just like Biden's 81. And um, but we try not to talk about it too much, you know, because it's it's a road to nowhere. It's a road to nowhere. See the greatest uh, waitress in the world. That's Carmen. She'll be there, I believe. And um, get a little chow after that stressful drive to and fro Westchester. But it's kind of a good time to go but I'll be by myself on this one. Adeline's got my back. Well, that makes me feel better. That makes me feel better. Thank you very much. Hearts wild. I don't believe in luck, but if I did, I appreciate the sentiment, you know, um, God has given me far more grace than I have ever deserved. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Well, you can see, and you can see the right way and still take the wrong way. I talk about that in that video, uh, the allure of choosing the wrong way. Please watch that video. It's talking about our most successful live video, and I forgot the one <laughs> with the Memphis Mafia guy. Um. It's like 16,000 views by far, our most uh, biggest live show. You can see all our past live shows right here in the live section of this channel, the Virtual Church of the Disillusioned. 59 watching, 49 likes. Thank you for those likes. I appreciate that. That helps us, I guess, be seen by more people as hitting plateaus in the subscribers, like 7,000. Uh, we could be there, and I don't even know. And uh, then uh, now we'll go for 10,000, 10,000 subscribers. I'll be happy with that. <laughs> I'll be happy with that. But it's really, you know, it's really the title. It's really the subject matter that draws people in. Because the verdict, my most popular video, has 138,000 views. So they weren't all subscribers, you know. And they didn't all hit the subscribe button, but they watched some of the video. Um. Brenda, it just, you are a phenomenon. People just love you here. They love you. Um, she was a Roberts before she got married. Okay. Yeah. So that's good. Thank you so much for stopping, everybody. Remember to pray for Joseph Kelly's dad. Remember to pray, um, Brenda, uh, she has family health issues, Brenda. You can state that real quick if you want. And um, Paul McCreary and Deborah Lake, uh, who's been going through chemo treatments. Keep her in prayer. And uh, you can post your concerns here. Sometimes I forget. And you can remind me in the um, replay of this here at the Virtual Church of the uh, Disillusion. And we'll see you Saturday night at 1030. Will I do a pre-recorded video for the weekend? Perhaps, perhaps. I'm not sure yet. But it could happen. It could happen. They're usually pretty short these days, you know, 15, 20 minutes, that kind of thing. Um, and uh, they are the most lucrative thing that I do, you know, the most lucrative thing. But uh, this certainly helps. And how wonderful to get on here and you kind people join me. And uh, we have a good time. So 1030 East Coast time, daylight savings time. Please spring arrive. Now, it'll, it'll be in and out. That's how it is. It can even be cold in May here in New York. Just the way it is. Have a good night, everybody. Talk to you Saturday night.